uh, let's see, it came to an end, the 13th Baktun, that's 13000, for a how three Kankin, that's the date of the, uh, of the t- t- December 21st, 2012, it will happen, and then it's broken. Actually, we can kind of figure it out what it says. It then says, he will come down Bologna Octay. Bologna Octay is nine dog tree. That's the name of a god. Or maybe it's the name of nine different gods. And he will do this. We figured out to the best of our ability what it might say. The, the, best, um, the best guess we have as to what's going to happen on that day is Bologna Octay, this minor god. I mean, this minor god is kind of like uh, the archangel Uriel. Right? He's kind of like, not, not as powerful as God, God Jehovah, but he is um, pretty powerful. And he's going to come down and this is what he's going to do. He's going to get dressed. <laughs> this is the only Maya prophecy we have from actual ancient Maya that says what's going to happen on that day. Bologna Octe will get dressed. Doesn't seem terribly earth shattering to me. But, what it means is he will perform a ceremony. Getting dressed means putting on a costume, putting on feathers, you know, doing ceremonies, which were very important to the Maya. In fact, most Maya monuments record ceremonies. That is what they do. They say the king dressed up and did this ceremony. He did the ceremony to this god, he did the ceremony to that god, he did this blessing ceremony, he incensed this building. These are the kinds of events that the Maya felt were worthy of recording for eternity. The things they carved in stone. Getting dressed was a fairly big event. Having a ceremony was a big event. And that is how a king takes care of his people. He dresses up, he does a ceremony. Um, That is what kings do, right? That is why a king is a king or a queen is a queen. Queen Elizabeth, her coins of Queen Elizabeth say, Elizabeth II DGR. Any coin collectors here? What does DGR stand for? It means De Grazia Regina. It's the Latin phrase that means queen by the grace of God. She's queen because God made her queen. The coins of England still say that. I'm not sure how many people believe that. But that's what we all agree to believe. We all agree that the king is king because they are special. And their progeny are special. So they get to be queen or whatever. And so the royalty of the Maya, their job was to take care of their people by interceding with the gods. They went down to the... uh, to the to the um, plaza, they stood up holding this object, as we'll see. Um, oops, I have to push this button. They're holding an object that connects them with the heavens, and that kind of ceremony is basically what he seems to be getting dressed up to do—a ceremony that takes care of his people. The problem is that they don't go any farther. They don't tell us what hap- what is what you know. That's the last glyph, right? <laughs> he dresses up so. They're not specific, and unfortunately, that's the problem. And because they're not specific, many, many people will project their own ideas of what's going to happen. Um, here's that text, by the way. Um, on the 13th Baktun, for a how three Kankin, it will happen that this guy will get dressed up. And this monument here is one that's, uh, there's a nice replica of it in the museum just down the street, uh, the, the uh, Museum of Man. It's called... Uh, and it talks about what happened on the last creation. There's a 13. See the two bars and the three dots? Come on, you can read my numbers, right? <laughs> Five is a bar, three is, the dot is one. Anyway, that's 13, zero, 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 four, a how, eight, come, coo. That's the date of the previous creation. And it says that the things were put in order, the three, so three stones placed. There's the end of the 13th Bach tune. And here is the date for a how in uh, the old version and for a how in the future version. It's the same date. And then this is three Kankin, this is eight Kumku. These are the, pre- the future 13-0 and the past 13-0. And here's what's going to happen. The hand holds a bead. That means it comes to an end. Uh, the 13th Baktun. That's the 13 on the 13-0-0. So they're basically saying that you know, essentially the same event happens coming up as, as happened in the past. This is the one text that tells us that in Tortuguero at least, they believed that something like creation would happen. Anyway, um, and here's the, uh, the Chilambalam text. As you can see that by 1740 or whenever this text was written, that the quality of Maya writing had, shall we say, declined a little bit. These were decadent people. They were conquered people. Um, it says here in Maya, Kanahau Katun, Ubuluk Sit Katun, and so forth. In the Mayan language, it tells us that 
you know, Quetzalcoatl is going to come, come back. There's Quetzalcoatl's name, Kuku Khan. It says that uh, the yellow, the green bird will come, and it says that there will be blood vomit. Blood vomit is a kind of, of uh, terrible disease that people got when, from, from the conquistadors. It was a disease brought by the Europeans. So that's the worst thing that's going to happen according to the uh, Chilambalam. So, we shouldn't necessarily believe everything that people tell you about the Maya prophecies, partly because we haven't got much data. We've got one stone monument and this book written, shall we say, rather crudely, in the year 1700 something. We have data that's contradictory. I haven't talked to you about, like I said, the, the return of Quetzalcoatl doesn't happen for another 40 years after 2012, or 20 years, probably 30, 30 years after 2012. Um, <clears throat> here's something else. The Maya did not have a, an un, what should I saw it say? What's the word for uh, Christian scriptures are inerrant, right? They do not, God makes no mistakes. And so there are many, many people who are Christians who believe that the Bible is the word of God and not a single letter can be changed without violating God's law, right? The Maya did not have that belief. Their scriptures were completely um, changeable. They were able to mess with, uh, um, with things. They changed things around. Oh, no, that's not the five-minute warning, is it? Um, <laughs> But they can contradict each other. And scholars themselves disagree. My own mentor, Mike Coe, believes that the 13000 date was so important that something important probably will happen. And um, I don't. And um, you know, we're good friends still, but we sometimes you know, take off our shirts and punch each other out about this thing. Anyway, another thing, this is very odd about the Maya. The Maya believed that when a priest or a carver or an artist making, you know, is carving something or speaking in a, in a ceremony, people like have slips of the tongue, right? The Maya believed that every one of these mistakes was, des, was deliberate and made by God. The gods were telling that person who was carving the, the wrong syllable or carving the wrong date that that was what the gods really were communicating. Even though, even though the arithmetic didn't work out, even though the, the sentence didn't work out, they would never correct an error. A card laid was a card played. No other culture does this, as far as I know. Um, another reason. The Maya predictions don't talk about destruction. They talk about getting dressed. Right? Um, also, they, there's, a, there's, a, there's a date, 4772, on a monument that I'll show you, um, where they think that the Maya, the Maya believe themselves that, that life would be going on. Another is that the solstice, the, the, the December 12th, the shortest day of the year, is important only if you live in the north or far south hemispheres. It's not an important thing in the tropics. You know, we have seasons up here, right? Not terribly important seasons, but farther north you get. How many people came from outside of California? You remember snow? <laughs> snow is important to people that live in snowy countries. It's not important to people in the tropics. You know, as far as we're concerned, it really hardly matters whether it's December or June, right? Uh, to the Maya, it didn't either. The solstice was not an important date. Also, Maya archaeology is 99% not yet done. There's only about 1% of, of any Maya site has been dug by archaeologists. Even the sites that where they've been digging for centuries, Chichen Itza, uh, Tikal, Palenque, Maybe 5% of the buildings have been touched by archaeologists. The rest are still heaps of stones with trees growing on them, waiting for us to discover what's inside them. And very few of these that have been sort of excavated have been penetrated. They're full of stuff. They're full of smaller versions of the same pyramid. They're full of uh, tombs. They're full of caches and, and sacred burials. And we just, there's just so much yes, yet for us to do. This, it's great for young Mexican archaeologists to know that they have lots left for them. But that also means that we are 99% ignorant of what the Maya really left us. Um, so here's the Temple of the Inscriptions panel. We will read it glyph by glyph today. <laughs> You're laughing. This is a good thing. Um, there's a translation of it. And uh, we're going to concentrate on this part and this part and this part. Um, Pakal, the guy that's buried in this temple, Temple of the Inscriptions, was um, he died in 683 AD 